so later in this workshop, we'll be using vivox for a visioning exercise. so um you can open the vivox app on your computer or phone uh, by scanning this qr code or going to vivox app on the internet and typing in this id code i also put a direct link in the chat full screen view is recommended for optimal viewing of this workshop um, to make the meeting full screen, double click the meeting window or click the bottom, the button in the upper right corner of the Zoom window. Um, this workshop is being recorded and will be available on the city's website uh, after the fact. And there is an exit survey at the end of the workshop with space for open ended comments. Uh, it will open in your browser when the workshop ends. So please give us feedback, feedback so we can do better in the future. Please note that everyone joining the workshop is muted by default, although I'm not sure if that's the, the case, um, but please stay muted unless you are called on to speak. And on your phone, you can use star six to mute and unmute if you're joining us from your phone. Um, we will also have a question and answer session at the end of the meeting, and you may use the raise hand feature to request to speak, or you can type questions into the chat box. Um, on your phone, you can use star nine to raise and lower your hand. Uh, to use the chat tool, uh, you click chat, the chat icon, um, and then you can type your message in the box in the bottom right. So here's our agenda for today. I'm first going to to step back. My name is Kristen Kenyon. I'm a principal planner with the City of Eureka's uh, Development Services Division. Uh, we also have a number of other planners here from Development Services tonight. Um, the first thing we'll talk about is just generally what this planning effort is about. Um, then I have some polling questions to see who is here in our audience today. Um, then the visioning exercise I mentioned. Um, then I'm going to talk about the public survey that's currently open. And then I'm going to give a few more details about the planning effort. And then we're going to have a question and answer session. And again, please fill out the exit survey that's going to pop up in your browser at the end of this meeting. Okay, so what are we talking about? What are gulches and greenways? Gulches are valleys and ravines that vary in size and topography and contain watercourses and wetlands. And greenways are the vegetated areas within and adjacent to the gulches. So if you look at a, a map of the city of Eureka, you'll see our street grid and then you'll see fingers of green disrupting that street grid. Those are our gulch greenways. Here's a map of the Eureka area. This purple line is a watershed boundary. And you can see that Eureka is divided into two watersheds. And there's these three drainages on the northern end of the city that drain north to Eureka Slough. Um, the third one is actually Myrtletown Gulch, and it's outside of the city limits, so it's not going to be affected by this planning effort. And then in the southern part, portion of the city, uh, the gulches there drain south towards uh, Martin Slough, which empties into Swain Slough, uh, Elk River, and uh, Humboldt Bay. So here's a map where there's the black dotted line on here is the city boundary. And the blue dotted line is the coastal zone boundary. This planning effort is just focused on the portions of the Gulch Greenways that are within the city limits and outside or inland of the coastal zone. Um, so we're talking about Cooper Gulch, which drains north to First Slough, Second Gulch or McFarland Gulch that drains north to Second Slough, and then this gulch system at the bottom of the city that we're calling the gulches of Martin Slough. Zooming in on Cooper Gulch, 
again, we're just talking about the part of it that's uh, outside of the coastal zone boundary, which is Myrtle Avenue here. Um, it starts south of 7th Street. Uh, it includes Cooper Gulch Park. 14th Street passes through it. Del Norte Street does. And Eureka High School has ball fields in this gulch. Um, and then it ends around Boone Street to the south. Second gulch, again, we're talking about the area outside of the coastal zone, so inland of Myrtle Avenue. Also within the city, uh, the city boundary here is Harrison Avenue. And um, in this gulch, Zane's right above the gulch. Um, Boone Street passes through it. St. Joseph's is right outside of it. And it ends a little south of Harris Street. The f Gulches of Martin Slough generally start south of Harris Street, and they include the Sequoia Park and Zoo and the Eureka Golf Course. <clears throat> what is the goal of this planning effort? Our general plan, which is the guiding document of our city, asks us to prepare and adopt Gulch Greenway preservation and management standards. So that is what the goal is here. Um, the city has no local guidelines or standards for the protection of wetland streams and riparian habitat outside of our coastal zone. Um, we also don't have standards for development on or adjacent to steep slopes. How do we adopt standards? Our working idea is to adopt a Gulches and Greenways ordinance that defines the boundaries of this Gulch Greenway management area. Um, includes statements of purpose for the area uh, that are values that we want to preserve and enhance and hazards we want to avoid, and then includes some additional standards and limitations for development and uses in this area uh, that align with the uh, environmental and safety uh, values. Okay, so now that we've talked about the planning area, um, we're curious who is here today. So I am going to start, let me stop my share. I'm gonna start a poll um, that should open in Zoom. Do you live, work, and or property in the city of Eureka? Please respond, looks like Nice, 80, almost 90% of people have responded. All right, end poll, share results. Uh, looks like 90% of people on this call um, that responded to the question live, work, and or own property in the city of Eureka. All right, next question. Um, do you live and or own property on or adjacent to a Gulch Greenway within the city of Eureka? Okay, we've got 90% of people have responded, so I'm gonna end the poll and share the results. So 59% of us live and or own property on or adjacent to a Gulch Greenway in the city limits. And one more question. Have you ever visited a Gulch Greenway within the city of Eureka? Okay, we're slowly 
All right, we're at 91% participated, so I'm going to end the poll. Looks like almost everybody has, uh, which makes sense since uh, Cooper Gulch and the zoo and the golf course are all in Gulch Greenways. So um, I'm going to stop sharing. And then I'm going to share my PowerPoint again. All right, moving on to our visioning exercise. Um, now I'm going to ask you all to go to uh, the VVox app so you can scan this QR code. You can go straight to vvox.app and enter this ID number, um, or you can click the direct link in the chat box that they just added again. I'm going to stop sharing, and I'm going to open another screen that shows that information. Okay, share. So the point of this is to get at the, the values and issues that we want to be addressing with these um, Gulch Greenway standards. And this is going to be creating a word cloud. Um, so the first one, I'm going to start, I'm going to open the poll. Using a single word or short phrase, name something you value about the city's Gulch Greenways. Oops. All right, let's look at some results. Okay, I'm gonna show results. Um, and the poll's still open, so that's why it's changing a bit. And it only allowed so many characters, so I see that stormwater protection was too, too long. I apologize for that. All right, I'm going to close it. So it looks like the top words are wildlife, habitat, wildlife, habitat, and nature, which um, aligns definitely with what we got from the uh, public survey so far. All right, I'm going to open another poll. Using a single word or phrase, name a concern you have about the current state of the city's Gulch Greenways. And you can input as many words as, as you like. Ready for some results. OK.
right, I'm going to close the poll. It looks like people are concerned about trash um, and about encampments and encroachment of development and dumping is another word for trash. Looks like a lot of synonyms for, for trash here. Okay, and then one more. Envision the future of the city's Gulch Greenways. In an ideal future, what would you like to see? Ready. Okay, I'm gonna start showing the results. All right, I'm gonna end the poll. So it looks like this one had a lot more ideas um, and trails and native plants and wildlife habitat were, were some of the top responses. All right, I am going to close out of this. And I'm going to open my PowerPoint back up. All right, so we're done using that VBOX app, so you can close out of that. Um, now I'm going to talk about the public survey, which is another way we're trying to get public input. Oh, I'm not in full screen. Um, let me reshare. I think you're in presenter mode. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Is that better? Okay. All right, so the public survey that's available online is open until mid-April, so if you haven't taken it yet, please take that survey. The uh, QR code and survey link are on this uh, slide, and Nay, can you put that in the chat too, please? The final results are going to be posted on the city's website, hopefully at the beginning of by the beginning of May. Um, as of this morning, the last I checked, we had 492 responses. The average time people are spending to fill it out is seven and a half minutes. Um, one of the questions we asked, just like we asked today, was whether the respondent lives or own prop lives or owns property on or adjacent to a Gulch Greenway in the city. And uh, so far, 43% of respondents live or own property within the affected area. Since the survey is still open, I'm not going to be going into detail about all the survey results right now. I'm just going to give a few interim results. Overall, um, the biggest message has been people want to see the city doing more to protect 
uh, the natural environment of the Gulch Greenways. Um, one question we asked was, what do you think we should include in the standards? And we gave a bunch of options. These were the top these are the top five options as of this morning. Um, fish and wildlife habitat and movement corridors are protected and enhanced is uh, the number one chosen option at 78%. Then uh, natural and scenic character is protected and enhanced. Uh, fragmentation of vegetation is minimized and a continuous riparian canopy is encouraged. Publicly accessible trail networks are promoted at 59%. Um, and appropriate buffers are established between sensitive habitat and adjacent urban uses. 56% uh, of respondents chose that option. Um, out of all the options we gave, the least popular one right now is um, exceptions are provided to allow development of housing. Only 6% of respondents have agreed with this statement that the standard should include exceptions for housing development. Um, we also asked what would be an adequate buffer um, between sensitive habitat and adjacent urban uses. Um, and people, many people were annoyed by this question because they thought we should be asking an expert. Um, but the people that did choose a distance, um, the most popular one was 100 feet, which is the most conservative option that we gave. And um, that was the same for people that live and own property on or adjacent to the Greenway, Gulch Greenway, and everyone else. Um, another question we asked was what uses and activities, if any, should be allowed in gulches? And we gave a bunch of options. Um, and these are the top five responses as of this morning. Um, again, fish and wildlife habitat um, enhancement and restoration uh, is projects is the most popular choice. 82% um, of people thought that should be allowed. Uh, vegetation removal or trimming for invasive plants, 78%. Public, public bicycle and pedestrian trails, 66%. Uh, vegetation removal for disease control and then vegetation removal for protecting life and property um, are also some of the top ones. Uh, the the one that's, the, of the options that we gave, the one that's currently the least popular is private recreation facilities. Only 3% of respondents feel like private recreation and all facilities should be allowed in gulches. Um, so again, that survey is still open and will be open till mid-April. So please take it if you haven't already. All right, uh, timeline and details of the planning effort. Like I just mentioned, we're, um, we've got the survey open. We're having our virtual public workshop tonight. On um, In addition to, to posting the survey results on our website, um, we're also going to present them at the Open Space Parks and Recreation Commission meeting on April 28th. Uh, that meeting starts at 6 p.m. and it's a hybrid meeting, so you can attend in person or via Zoom. Um, we're also hoping to have draft ordinance language or at least options for standards to present at that time. Um, and then the rest of this timeline is very tentative, um, but we're hoping potentially to go to Planning Commission at their May and June hearings and then City Council in July. And if we end up going the route of doing a Gulches and Greenway ordinance, City Council are going to be the ones that ultimately adopt that ordinance. Um, and again, these are all going to be hybrid meetings unless something changes. Um, so the public can attend in person or via Zoom. Uh, and because it's a tentative timeline, it's really critical that people sign up for the mailing list for this Sculptures and Greenways planning effort. Um, when Planning Commission and City Council has hearings, uh, we will notice them in the time standard, but the safest way to get updates is to get on the mailing list. And how you do that is you can provide your email uh, during the online survey. It asks if you want to 
get on the mailing list and provide your email, or you can email us directly at planning um, at ci.eureka.ca.gov um, and request to be added. So why do we need local standards? Here's another map that shows the gulches uh, relative to the city boundary, which on this map is in um, red. And the gulch areas are generally highlighted in blue, and the um, privately owned portions of the gulch gulches are um, colored in blue, and the, the publicly owned portions of the gulches, which are predominantly owned by the city of Eureka, are in green. Um, and you can see that over 75% of the, the gulch area within the city um, is owned privately. And then here's another map, and this shows that the majority of the gulch areas within the city are also zoned uh, residential, uh, mostly low density residential. So standards can be very helpful when there's lots of private property owners to ensure good stewardship and prevent further fragmentation and degradation. So how do we map and define the gulch greenways? Um, at the beginning of this process, I sent out, we sent out a mailer to property owners um, that fall within this map, um, but this is, um, this existing mapping is general and based on old data. Um, so the maps I've been showing during this presentation that outline the area, um, it's just really general mapping at this point. And as part of this planning process, we are creating a new map uh, and we're thinking that we want to focus on the large intact systems just like this older map does. Um, and depending on how we end up defining the area, precise mapping may or may not be feasible. Um, if what we're doing is protecting wetlands and watercourses, then we may want to base the mapping on the presence of wetlands and watercourses, and we have mapping of the stream center lines in National Wetland Inventory, but to comprehensively map wetlands and watercourses, it really requires field verification, so it's a hard thing to, to do. Um, we could also map using the floodplain, and we have FEMA's official uh, floodplain that could be used. It's shown in um, gray on this map. We're also considering mapping anything below the top of slope. Um, and so the city has really detailed elevation data uh, down to one foot contour. So we can map slope uh, well. And it's hard to see on this map, but this shows um, steep slopes. Uh, slopes greater than 30% are in red. Slopes 26 to 30% are in orange, and slopes 20 to 25% are in yellow. Uh-oh. And if you um, zoom in, uh, you can see that it gets more challenging to figure out how to use this slope data to then define the boundaries of the gulch areas. Um, we also if we want to protect riparian vegetation that we might want to be mapping um, based on the edge of the riparian canopy and including riparian vegetation in our gulch areas. Um, and it's really easy on an aerial image to see the edge of vegetation and map it, but it's not always clear what, what vegetation type you're looking at. Um, we're also considering adding a setback or buffer between development and um, sensitive habitat in order to protect that habitat. And the county has a streamside management ordinance uh, that applies outside of the city in the unincorporated county. And they use, um, they, they map a buffer from the top of bank or the edge of the riparian canopy, whichever is greater, and, and from the edge of wetlands. Um, and I believe that's something that California Department of Fish and Wildlife supports. Um, 
what buffer distance is needed is really site specific and it depends on potential direct and indirect impacts of the development that's proposed and the needs of the habitat there. Um, and to address the uncertainty of that, um, a lot of regulations will start with larger buffers and then allow reductions in width if impacts can be avoided. That's what the, the county streamside management ordinance does. Um, and it's important to note that buffers not only protect habitat, but they also protect development. Because if you site a structure too close to a stream or a wetland, it can be um, undermined um, by erosion. And <clears throat> it also can be subject to fire hazard if it's close to vegetation. And our fire department recommends 30 and 100 foot uh, fire clearance areas around structures. So if you site your structure right next to a riparian habitat, um, then it creates an incentive to remove riparian vegetation for fire safety clearance reasons. Uh, whereas if you have a buffer, then you wouldn't have that same issue. So um, this is my last slide before we go to question and answers. Um, and I just wanted to take a moment to talk about some things that the standards can't necessarily achieve. And um, one thing is that the standards are not going to be a plan for the location and extent of public trails. They will talk about what uses are allowed in the Gulch Greenway area, and um, They'll set general standards for development and uses in those areas, but they're not going to be a trail plan. Um, they're also not a solution to encampments. We have a homelessness crisis, and standards aren't really going to do anything to help us in that situation. Um, the city has other programs like Uplift that are trying to address the homelessness crisis, and we're currently working on a homeless action plan. Um, and then the standards can incentivize and require good stewardship, but they're not a complete solution to issues of trash and invasive species. Uh, dealing with those things really requires ongoing community-wide effort. Um, and I really encourage everybody to check out empowereureka.org, uh, where you can sign up to volunteer, um, and you can even uh, sign up to host your own event, and the city will provide supplies. And um, for instance, we have a council member who's currently working on events uh, removing invasive species from the Cooper Gulch area. So um, with that um, Q&A session, um, I just wanted to go over some ground rules before we start. Um, please either type your questions in the chat box or raise your hand. And um, let me see, what time are we at? It's only 6.05, so we have almost a half hour for questions. Um, but regardless, try to be succinct so that everybody gets a chance. And in the interest of time, we only really want to be taking questions right now. Um, not comments, because comments take longer. Um, so please don't raise your hand to speak if you only have comments. Um, if you have comments, you can uh, definitely include them in the exit survey that's going to show up in your browser at the end of the meeting. Um, there's also a comment section in the public survey online. Um, Nay, can you reshare the, the link for that? I forgot to put it on. And um, you can also just email us or call us directly um, to ask your questions. And the last ground rule is please focus on the meeting of the t the meeting topic, which is standards for gulches and greenways management and preservation. And again, if you're on your phone, you can um, use star nine to raise and lower your hand, and star six to mute and unmute. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can see everybody. OK. I don't have any 
hands raised, so I'm going to answer questions. Okay, let me scroll up. Can, can we encourage conservation easements on private property? Yes, we, we could um, encourage conservation easements on private property. Our zoning code actually already has a conservation subdivision provision that allows you to um, go, get away from some zoning standards um, in, if you're able to uh, maintain, I believe it's at least 50% of your, your site as open space. Um, and then you're allowed more creativity with your uh, subdivisions, with your subdivision uh, parcel configurations. So that to encourage people to to leave uh, continuous, large continuous open space intact um, when they subdivide. And I think part of that ordinance already calls for you to to put some sort of ease, conservation easement on the open space area. Um, that you are protecting during that conservation subdivision. Um, but that's also something we could think about adding to uh, Gulches and Greenway ordinance, um, for instance, as mitigation maybe for um, encroachment into the planning area um, or conversion of, of habitat or something like that. Okay, let me see next question is this ordinance a CEQA event yes um, it's a discretionary action so it's subject to CEQA um, I haven't thought deeply about CEQA but it it will be um, increasing um, the amount of protection of these areas so I wonder if it might be um, it might meet a, a, a common sense exemption because it's only going to um, improve protection of resources. Um, okay. Again, if you guys want to ask me questions verbally um, or ask our planning staff, you can also raise your hand. Um, you can do that by uh, clicking on the three dots in the corner of your screen. Um, Okay, will the standards document include historical and ongoing abuses? That's a good question. You know, as part of this planning effort, we're mapping the area. Um, so we do have really detailed, we have um, flyover aerial imagery, very detailed from many different years um, that we that we use for our, our GIS work. So um, we need to think about what is the the baseline that we're mapping, um, especially if we're going to base the mapping on the the edge of vegetation. Um, because yeah, people could remove veg at any moment, and then we have a new baseline. Um, okay, let me see. Are any of the city-owned Gulch's Greenway areas within the coastal zone boundary? If yes, does this give more protection against any future development? Yeah, good question. I saw earlier, too, somebody was asking about why we're not including the coastal zone. Um, yeah, our drainages go out to the bay through our coastal zone. Um, the reason we're focusing just on the inland area currently is because our coastal zone already has standards. Uh, they are old. They were certified in the 90s, um, and they're certified by the Coastal Commission. And they're also um, more coastal focused like for instance you can there's a standard that you can fill a wetland for a coastal dependent industrial use so I think there's some aspects of the the coastal standards that wouldn't apply inland they're also older and um, they're basically a reflection of the coastal act so they're not necessarily 
um, based on a city public effort like this is, but we are hoping to update our local coastal program um, soon and we want to model it on our inland code. So uh, potentially one day, whatever standards we develop here could be translated into um, standards for the gulch areas in the coastal zone as well. Um, is the Wiat tribe going to be involved in this project? Um, we definitely will be uh, consulting with the Wiat tribe about this. That is a really good point. Um, and we are required to, but we definitely want to as well. Um, what are the buffer widths in the coastal zone portions of the gulches? In the coastal zone, our local coastal program sets a hundred foot buffer, minimum buffer width, but then it allows development to uh, be sited closer if it can prove that it's not going to have impact on the habitat area. And so if you want to have a buffer of less than 100 feet, you have to get a, a biological report from a qualified uh, person that shows that what you're doing is not going to impact the resources of that nearby habitat. <clears throat> Will you be developing standards for exterior lighting to prevent light pollution? That's a really good question. Um, our inland zoning code actually has um, some good lighting standards that apply uh, to everyone uh, for new lighting that require um, it to be downcast and dark sky compliant. Um, but we are definitely consider in the gulches area having something about, you know, um, not encroaching further into the area. Like maybe if we're going to say, um, you know, if we get building plans where somebody's just um, doing something to an existing developed area, uh, we might just check them to see that they're consistent. They're not going to encroach further into the Gulch Greenway area. And maybe one of the things we check is that they're not going to have additional light pollution issues. Um, okay. Will you be developing standards for landscaping adjacent to greenways? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, we currently are, we have a standard um, right now that uh, required landscaping is at least, tell me if I'm wrong, other planning staff, uh, at least 75% native. That's correct. Okay. Um, but yeah, maybe um, we will look at whether we need a, a different standard adjacent to the, the gulch greenways or maybe uh, planting or removing invasives could be some something that is a mitigation for uh, planting natives or removing invasives could be could be a potential maybe mitigation for for a reduced buffer or something like that. Um, will standards interface with animal keeping ordinance? Domestic animals can be a source of wildlife harassment and affluent runoff. I hadn't thought about that. Um, yeah, we are, uh, that's a good point. Um, we will look at our animal keeping ordinance and, and think about that. Okay. Are there any plans to daylight and restore the creek in Gulch, Second Gulch? Yeah, um, there is, the city has a stormwater, I'm tr blanking on the name of, it's actually not a city document, it's for the Eureka area, and it talks about all these different uh, projects that could 
be um, done in the future to enhance water quality. And I believe in there, there's, there's plans to um, daylight and restore reaches of these drainages that are uh, culverted or um, in pipes under streets, or at least um, increase the size of those um, under street areas so that they're, they're more um, appropriately sized and maybe more friendly to fish passage. Um, let me see. I can put that information on the web page. Okay. Will the standards address fencing in wildlife corridors? Yeah, we are considering adding, um, allowing for wildlife friendly fences and, and then I'm not sure if we're we're debating what to recommend in terms of other types of fences um, because I know there's concern about pe property owners if if trails come they want to be able to protect their private property um, from people using the trail and um, so weighing that against the desire to have um, to allow wildlife movement through these corridors um, is something that we have to think about. <laughs> and um, I'm interested in people's thoughts. All right. What are some of the city's goals in this? Um, <clears throat> good question. I, the, city, the city's goal is to adopt Gulches and Greenways preservation and management standards to ensure appropriate use and management of these areas um, and protection. So um, that's the city's goal. Figuring out what is appropriate is something that is not in our general plan. Um, so that's something that this planning process is, is doing. Um, Will the standards provide guidance regarding code enforcement for violations? We don't typically include information on violations within standards in our, in our code. It's usually in a, a separate section. Um, Kristen, do you have any thoughts on, on this one? Kristen Guess, our other principal planner. Good evening, everybody. So our code enforcement officers would use whatever standards are in this ordinance to um, either abate or gain compliance with um, anything that doesn't uh, comply with those standards. Oh, I see we have a hand raised. Um, Gordon, are you ready to talk? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm wondering whether the city has a working definition for riparian habitat. Um, often it focuses on, you know, red alders, willows, cottonwoods, that sort of thing. But of course, uh, many of the gulches and greenways are dominated by redwoods. But also there's some incredible invasive um, uh, areas that are right out of Jurassic Park. I'm thinking off uh, Second Slough and uh, Boone Avenue, where it's it's um, you know dominated by invasives. But we would still want to um, have a functional approach to the value of the um, riparian habitat, you know, adjacent to streams and wetlands. Thanks. Thanks, Gordon. Uh, so. We do not currently have a definition of riparian habitat in our um, Eureka Municipal Code. Uh, so that would be something that we need to include in a definition section for this ordinance. And I'm hearing everything that you're saying. Um, I was, you know, looking at other ordinances, it tends, the definition tends to have to do with the plants need for the, the water course, the presence of the, the water course near them to, um, and, but we'll definitely um, ask 
experts on on the best way to define that but i i appreciate your your thoughts on that very good thank you okay all right next question okay it's 6 20. Um, would landowners have assistance from the city with removing invasive plants? The standards are not going to have anything about city support, but um, that we, I recommend checking out Empower Eureka and um, the city does want to support invasive plant removal um so any ideas on on how we can be of assistance we definitely want to hear maybe wouldn't be included in in gulch greenway standards but could be something that we uh pursue separately has there been any discussion on the part of the city to buy pieces of private property on gulches um I do not know that that is the case. I, I don't do, I think the answer is no at this time. All right. Um, Gordon, did you have another question? I see your hand is raised again. No, sorry about that. I thought I lowered my hand. I think I lowered your hand and that's why you raised it again. Oh, okay. Sorry Apologies. about that. <laughs> okay, um, another question. How will the ordinance rules and enforcement impact act on activities on private property? Yes, this ordinance is going to be, if, if that's the route we go, um, it'll be like an overlay of additional standards and limitations um, that apply in this area in addition to to other standards and limitations set by our Eureka Municipal Code. So this definitely will impact activities on private property. This may be a trivial question, but would the gulches Greenways and gulches be rezoned. We're not thinking that's the route we're going to go at this time. It could be that in addition to their base zone, they get a, a gulch greenway overlay um, that tips you off that you have some additional standards if you want to develop in the, the area. Um, Does the city still use herbicides and pesticides on city property? I think the answer is no. Um, if you want to uh, email me that question though, I can um, confirm that. Will there be, okay, there are homes built directly inside filled portions of Martin Slough. Are people still permitted to do this, and can existing homes be removed by attrition, as seen on Woodley Island? So currently, like I, sh I, sh I showed that map of, of residential zoning, um, a lot of the Gulch Greenways um, are zoned residential and hypothetically could be developed, although there are state and federal laws that protect um, wetlands and the bed bank and channel of, of streams. Uh, I'm losing my train of thought. Um, yeah, so um, in terms of existing homes, city staff is recommend is thinking we're going to recommend that uh, existing development, as long as it, it doesn't encroach further, or maybe we allow some amount of encroachment, but um, that it wouldn't it wouldn't be um, subject to 
to to limitations um, the way new development would, um, but I'm definitely happy to get feedback on that. Um, and I guess that answers this next question, will there be a grandfathered clause for existing development? That's generally what I'm, I'm thinking city staff will recommend, but that's, that's just our current thought. So I'm happy to, to hear feedback about that. And that again, it would be our recommendation. Um, and then it's ultimately uh, city council that will decide. Um, okay, does the city, oh wait. Okay, sorry, it's 6.27 p.m. Okay, before the end of the workshop, um, if, I, if I failed to answer your question, please um, email us. And let me share my PowerPoint again. Okay. So if you haven't taken the public survey, please take it. Um, and please sign up to be on the mailing list by providing your email during the survey or request to be um, added by emailing us at planning at ci.eureka.ca.gov. Um, check out the survey results on the city website um, by the beginning of May and attend in person or via Zoom the Open Space Parks and Recreation Commission meeting on April 28th that starts at 6 p.m. And again, um, when you close out of this meeting, uh, exit survey will pop up in your browser. Um, please take the survey to let us know how we can do better in the future. Thanks everybody, that's the end of this workshop. Thank you.